What happens when you have multiple physical locations, but you want to keep everything in the same network? Well, you probably pay someone to set everything up for you with that fat IT budget. Or you can use TP-Link Omada's system to create a site-to-site -site VPN that'll let you access everything on your network, no matter which physical location you're at. Hey Tim, yeah, I'm out here in the woods and I am having trouble connecting back to the server. Why are you in the woods? I don't know, Daniel told me to go check the logs. You dumb son of a Now what exactly are we doing here? Well, we're gonna be using Omada's built-in IPsec VPN service to establish a direct communication line between two physical locations. Why would you want something like this? Well, for businesses, this is actually extremely useful. Imagine you have all your servers at one location, then a bunch of workers at another, or you have multiple teams at multiple locations who all need access to the same data or servers under a common network infrastructure. Well, that's what a site-to-site -site VPN is going to allow us to do. Now, obviously it's going to be designed to be used primarily by businesses, but that doesn't mean that a regular schmo like you or me can't make use of it. Imagine you and your buddy both have Omada systems set up at your houses, then you could easily deploy off-site backup servers at each other's homes and run a site-to-site -site VPN for extremely easy access to your backups. Pretty neat. So for my setup, I'll be showing you how to run a typical configuration between what I'll be calling my home site, which is running an Omada setup with an Omada controller, to another remote work site, which is running just a regular Omada firewall router, like this one right here. So here we are, this is our home network. I am running the Omada controller here. We will be connecting to a remote site that isn't running the Omada controller, just the router slash firewall itself. Uh, these steps will be pretty similar if you're running a controller at the remote site as well, but we'll step through it as I am running it here. So. This is it, this is my home site, and the first thing you're going to want to do is get your WAN public IP address. And to do that, go over here to devices and find your router. So I am running the ER605, so let's click on that, go down here to WAN and expand this, and it will tell you your IP address right here. Now I am not showing that to you because it is my public IP address. Make a note of this and um, for the sake of this video, just know that my home one is 146. I will give you that much information. Okay, the other thing you wanna make note of is what is your LAN network um, subnet range? So go down here to LAN. Uh, if you have multiple that you wanna pass through, make a note of that, but for this, we are just passing through the LAN network, and that is on the 192.168.0.1 subnet. So make a note of that. We have our home network, with our public IP, and then we just looked up what the subnet we wanna pass through is, and make a note of both of those things. We will use those later. And just to prove that I am on that network, let's go down here and I will do an IP config. And you can see the address that I have given is, or I've been given, I have been, my IP address is 192.168.0.8 within that LAN uh, subnet. Neat, so now we wanna do the same thing with our remote site. So you can do this if you know the public IP that you're deploying to, but um, in most cases, you'll wanna go set it up and then do this later. But I have both of these on separate WANs at my own house, so I can easily switch. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, running IP config again. You'll see I am now on a different subnet. I am now on the 192.168. Dot 69 nice subnet. And that is my remote setup. So going over here, I kind of already have it set up, but let's go to the status. So for this part, just assume that I am hundreds or thousands of miles away at a remote site logging into my firewall. And going into system status, you'll see right here, we want those two pieces of information that we got before. The first one being our public IP or our WAN address. And we can get that right here. You can see that uh, it is listed here. I am blurring it out, but for this video, you can have the last three digits. They are 252, so make note of that. So my home one ended in 146, and my remote one is 252. 
Now we can go ahead and get our LAN address. Going into LAN, you can see we are using the subnet 192.168.69.1, which I just showed you is the subnet that I am on. Okay, so we have all of that information marked down. I will be making a uh, little flow chart that I'm probably showing you right now uh, to make this look much more visually appealing. But yeah, now we're ready. You can go in either order here. Um, I'm going to start with our home network uh, just because it makes more sense. So let me connect back to my home network and we will continue. Okay, let's check again just to confirm that I am back on my home network. Yes, we are the 0.1 subnet. Neat. So now we actually want to create the site to site VPN connection and it is honestly extremely easy now that we have all of the information that we just gathered. So go in the settings, go into VPN, and then we are going to create a new VPN policy. Give it a name. I'm going to call it site to site enabled, obviously site to site VPN. And we are going to do manual IPSEC. So you can do auto if you are using a cloud controller. That makes it a lot easier, but I assume a lot of people have their own controller and want to connect manually to remote sites. So I will show you this way. If you're using a different way, then um, congratulations. So the first thing it's going to ask for are the remote gateway and the remote subnets. So the remote gateway is the public IP address of the site you wanna to connect to. So remember we are on our home network and we want to connect to our remote site or our work site. You remember we wrote that information down. So my remote gateway is that public IP address and let's enter that here, obviously blurred out, but remember it ended in 252 and the remote subnet that we wanted to use was 192.168.69, nice, one, dash 24. Cool, and the local networks, now we did write down what the actual subnet was, but with the controller, you can actually just select it here. So we're not gonna do all of them. We are just gonna do our LAN. And then it's going to ask for a pre-shared key. This is just a text string that you wanna use. Uh, it's essentially a password for your VPN to make the connection. So we are just going to create one called Omada. Get wild with it. Uh, the more wild, the better. Uh, that's what I thought in college, mistake. And the WAN is the outgoing WAN interface we wanna use, which is WAN. All right, down in advanced settings, we wanna change a few things. So we are going to change the key exchange version to IKE version one. Now you can leave it with IKE version two, but if you're doing manual IPSEC, it does seem to work better with IKE v1 because we will be connecting to a remote site that is using just the VPN router and not a controller. So we'll change it to IKE v1, leave all of this the same. You can go ahead and change it. Uh oh, oh God. Um, what was it, SHA-1, uh, AS-256, and DH2. Uh, exchange mode, leave it in main mode. If you have questions about what these things even mean, uh, Mata does do a good job at providing you a nice little help center table of contents like thing go down in here and it gives you a nice little description of what each of these settings do. So uh, for exchange mode, uh, you can see that it basically says you can have it in main or aggressive. Uh, main is more secure and aggressive is faster but less secure. So we're just gonna leave it in main. Uh, initiator is how it initiates the connection. Perfectly fine to just leave it in initiator mode for this use case. And one thing we will change is the local ID type. So we are going to use a name. We are on the home site. So we are going to give it a name of home site. Yes, we are very creative. And the remote name, we are going to call it um, work site. And then that is the last setting we are going to change. Everything else is going to be left default. Click create. Okay, you can see we have this set up. It is enabled and ready to go, but obviously it's not connected because we haven't set it up on the remote site. So let's do that. Okay, so let's take a look. We are on the 69 network. Nice, meaning that we are on our remote site. Okay, so we are in our remote router uh, GUI. So we can do essentially the same thing that we did before. We're gonna go into VPN, IPSEC, and we are going to add a VPN policy. So it is gonna be slightly different if you're not using the controller, but 
all of the data is essentially the same kind of thing. So we are going to give it a name, or again, we'll call it site to site. And they don't call it site to site mode, they call it land to land mode. So leave it as that. And the remote gateway. So that is same thing as last time. We are connecting to our remote gateway, but from this perspective, we are at our remote site. So the remote gateway is actually going to be our home gateway. So remember, we wrote that down, ended in 146. There you go. The WAN we wanna use is our WAN and the local subnet that we wanna to use to pass through. Now on our controller, it let us select, which I think is a cool feature, but uh, we have to manually enter it here. Kind of annoying, but luckily we wrote that down. And you guys remember what subnet we're using over here, 192.168.69.1 slash 24. And the remote subnet was 192.168.0.1 slash 24. Pre-shared key was the password we created. I did Omada, I think. And into advanced settings, uh, make sure all this is the same. SHA-1, AES-256, and DH2, IKE V1, exchange mode, main, negotiation, initiator, local ID type. Remember we used name. The local one to this, which is our remote site. I know it's confusing, but we are on our remote site. So the local one over here we gave it was work site. And the one we want to connect to back home was home site. Everything else stays the same. All of this should match. Click OK. And both of them are now enabled and should be communicating with each other. So let's test that out. Well, the first thing you can do to actually see that it is connected is go over here to this tab, FIPSEC SA. And if you see that you have directions in and out and a tunnel ID, that means they are connected and should be working. So how do we actually test that in the real world? Well, let's pull up our run IP config again, just to show that we are still in the 6.9 subnet. But since we are connected, that means we should have access over our VPN back home to the 192.168.0.1 subnet, which means that I should be able to ping a device back home as if I were sitting right in front of it. So if I ping, 192.168.0.9, which is actually my phone that I'm looking at right now on my home network. Look at that. We are on the 69 subnet pinging across our IPsec site-to-site -site VPN back home to a device on our home network. Just like that, we have set up site-to-site -site VPN connections and yeah, Honestly, really easy. All of it's encrypted. You can set these up. You can set multiple ones up if you have multiple sites. And it's really convenient because now you can connect to all your devices on all your sites uh, without having to do anything too fancy. It is all handled by the Omada system. And you can sit back and look like a professional. Like I said, pretty straightforward, extremely useful, and all the hardware I used or recommend will be listed down in the description below. And I know there are a thousand other ways of setting up a VPN connection, but it's always convenient when it's built right into your networking gear. Let me know down in the comments what kind of VPN you're running to communicate between your remote sites and your home or work or whatever. But that's it. If you like this video, then be sure to drop a like. If you like content like this, then please consider subscribing. It helps the channel out a ton. And I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons, you guys are my site-to-site -site VPN fully encrypted, hopefully so you don't have my personal information. But yeah, you guys are awesome. So that is it. If you're still watching, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.